Hello and welcome to today's video. As you can probably tell from my voice, I'm still sick. Uh, so excuse any uh, sniffling and or coughing that may occur during this video. And uh, so the, pretty much the next step on my uh, Selectory E10 lithium ion conversion is to take apart the battery pack. And uh, yeah, I just haven't been feeling good enough to do that yet. So, uh, I got a few emails from people wanting uh, the old uh, tail and ear controller, servo controller, and that's what this guy is. Uh, you can see the date on there is 2005. I made this a long time ago. It was part of the real-time motion control system. This is actually a scaled-down version. It's missing the um, it was a serial connector port. Nobody uses serial ports anymore. It's all USB. Um, RS-232 converter went there, but this is essentially a four-channel servo controller. It did um, uh, tail and ears and was user programmable through a little button board on there. And uh, microcontroller has gone obsolete several times. I forgot which ones. If you go back and look at the website, you can kind of see that um, I went through a whole bunch of different Atmel controllers because it kept obsoleting them and I had to keep rewriting all the code every time. and because I always changed all the registers and stuff, but um, yeah, anyways, uh, so there's that one. So about a few years ago, I made this guy, which is uh, the version 2 of the real-time motion control system, and um, yeah, the, the serial port got replaced with a USB port, um, much more powerful microcontroller, and uh, does eight servos instead, or, you know, it's got a whole bunch of different stuff. There's a video that I did on it. It's got CAN bus, uh, I squared C, SPI, uh, RS-232, uh, well, UARTs uh, can be on any of the pins. It can do eight servos. It's got a uh, SD card slot on it. You know, it's the works, right? Well, that costs a lot, and uh, I'm still kind of working on the code in my spare time. <coughs> and... Uh, so, people are like, no, 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 we want the really cheap one that you had before, and uh, we don't want this one. We want nice, simple, because this one you have to hook up to a PC to program it and get it all up and running. And they're like, no, 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 we want the really cheap one. So, da, 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 here it is. This is essentially this, but I've it's been cut down to fit in the same form factor as the old one. Um, so you can kind of see... It's it's like that, right? And I cut the end off just so it would be the same size as the other one. It's a little smaller. Um, but yeah, it does uh, four channels. Uh, ear, ears, tail. Well, I could do a tail, an ears or tail, and um, like eyelids or, you know, whatever you want to do. It's a servo controller, user programmable, so it's not, you know, it can do all kinds of stuff. Cost reduced. Uh, so it doesn't have any, it doesn't have canvas, doesn't have the SD card on there, it doesn't have, um, uh, doesn't really have much of anything, it's just literally the microcontroller, and, uh, doesn't even have an external oscillator. Uh, this one's got an external oscillator because USB's timing is pretty critical, so it has an external clock, whereas, uh, this one just uses the internal, uh, oscillator, which is good enough for running some servos. But anyways, um... Yeah, so I've, I've been working on the code on this guy, and um, it's all done. So, go ahead and show you that here. <coughs> so, if we move over, you'll see we've got some servos, and uh, I made some fake little ears for these guys, for the ear ones. Uh, this one will be the um, wag axis and the tail, uh, yeah, tail wag axis. Uh, this is the uh, tail uh, tuck and raise axis. I got a little button board here, uh, standard uh, five pin. Um, actually, the same one that's compatible with the uh, with the uh, old board. It's, it just plugs in. And I've got one here that's hooked up. Uh, it has a programming connector on there. You can see the actual real one have a programming connector since um, they'll come pre-programmed. But uh, if you don't need the debugging, you don't need that connector on there. But yeah, that one's hooked up. Um, I've got it hooked up to the power supply. Interestingly enough, uh, if you watch my X-Tech Power Supply modification videos, um, it, it has one of these in there. <laughs> There's one of those actually inside here to control this. So I'll go ahead and um, turn this guy on here. And uh, 
can see we draw about 100 milliamps idle. Um, 20 milli, about 80 milliamps is each one of the servos draws about 20 milliamps. So my micro doesn't really draw that much. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, yeah, it booted up here, and uh, we'll just go through some quick little things. Um, so the buttons are in order. You can see this one's a little bit different, and uh, that's actually the programming button. Usually I do a shorter button, and it's a different color. I don't know if that shows up. Um, to, well, we can enter programming mode here. So if you push programming mode once, you'll see it moves the servo, and then you can use the uh, buttons here to adjust where that point is. Let me zoom in here. You can see I'm moving it around. And you can do like really fine tuning it. I don't know if you can see it moving, but it's it's clicking like a little itty bitty tiny bit, right? But it's easier if you just hold down the button, it'll move. So uh, let's see, let's look right down on here. We'll just, um, we'll move this one. So we're adjusting the slow wag position. Uh, we'll go ahead and just get that black line to the edge. We'll do the same thing on the other side here. Um, I don't remember, did I do outside edge or inside edge? So if we go back, oh, outside edge. So we can flip between the two endpoints and adjust that, move it around. So you can get it where you want. And then when we hit the programming button again, it'll go into, it'll now move between those two points. It does a cosine move, so it's going from one point to the other. And uh, we can hold the button to speed it up. Um, the other button slows it down. And then, I don't know if you can tell, but if you click it, it'll slows down or speeds up by little tiny increments as well. So you can get it exactly how you want. So if you want your slow wag to be... Yeah, that seems reasonable to me, right? Go ahead and uh, hit it again. And now we're going to adjust the uh, essentially the fast wag positions. And oh, we want full full throw on this puppy, right? So we want this to be really fast. So I'll crank that all the way up to there. Now let's do the other side here. Crank that all the way up as well. Yeah, this is probably going to be end up being a really long video. Uh, it's not meant to actually be the programming thing. I'll probably do a, uh, another video later. But um, essentially the same thing. You can adjust it. And then I'll just go ahead and hold that down and really crank up the speed on this. Now we want it to where the servo is actually <clears throat> coming to a stop at the ends before it changes direction. Because if we, here, I can show you. If we go really fast... See, now we're never ever getting to our destination. We've exceeded the speed of the servo. So, I like to adjust it to where at least it's coming to a stop before it changes direction. It's just easier on the servo, right? So anyways, after you get the two speeds that you want, hit programming button again, and now it lets us adjust the center, and you can do the same thing where you can move it around. But, um, uh, it actually looked like it, it calculates the center point. And then it goes there, and then you can move it. That looks pretty close. I mean, I'm not going to do that. And then when we hit the programming button again, we're going to move to this servo. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, this is the raise and tuck servo, so we'll go ahead and just crank it to the extents, because, you know, why not? Oh, let me go back. I actually hit the end of the servo travel there, so we backed it off a little bit. Uh, go ahead and... Just the other side here. I guess we don't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but let's do that. Oh, that looks good. And then we're going to adjust our speed. We want this to be fairly quick. So, I say that's good. And then center point, eh, we're off a little bit. We can, uh, we can go ahead and do it the wrong way. Adjust that to, yeah, well, that looks good. <laughs> And now we've saved it. It's just stored everything. And uh, now when we... Uh, probably should have showed you at the beginning. Um, so this is now slow, way, slow wag, right? If I click the button again, we're going to go to fast wag. If I click it again, we're going to return to center. Then we have, of course, 
tail raise, tail tuck, or vice versa, depending on which direction you set it up. And then um, go back to center. <clears throat> now you might notice, wait, we didn't do the ears. And that's because uh, the ear, we uh, not everybody has ears, they just might have the tail, so it's actually a separate procedure. <coughs> Sorry about that. To program the ears, and um, to set those guys up, you just double click the program button, and now we're, we're, we skip all that, we're now programming the ears. So this will essentially be like, you could do ears or eyelids. Um, this would be equivalent to like, you know, the forward position. Like the ears are perked forward, so you can can adjust my my fake looking crappy paper ears here, but um I don't know. Let's just put it like right there. That looks good. Who cares, right? Um you can adjust the other side as well. This would be like uh folding the ears back. So uh that that looks good. And then um hit the program button again we're gonna just to speed those travel or travel between those two points and you know that looks good and then of course we can just center point but um yeah we'll just leave it there <laughs> and uh we'll do the other ear now and we'll just move that one about where i put the other one uh, i think i moved it back a little bit more too let's just do that looks good I don't need to change the speed. And center point looks like we are off a little bit, so let's just, with relation to the other one, we'll just uh, kind of make it so they're both in the same general relative spot. No, that looks good. So then we hit OK. And it's funny because um, that little, like when you're done programming everything, they're all in the center position, right? So when you exit program mode, I actually programmed in that little glitch so that you know that it's exited program mode, which I think it's hilarious because... <clears throat> in reality, you, I mean, you never want to glitch servos, but I actually do glitch them in, intentionally just so you know that you've exited programming mode. But anyways, now when we, um, uh, so now when I do, uh, say, uh, slow ag, you can see the servo just does its thing. And then if I hit it again, you can see now fast wag, the ears go forward. Kind of extreme, but oh well. Uh, if we go ahead and go back to normal, uh, if you um, tuck the tail under, you can see the ears go back. If you uh, tell the ears or uh, raise the tail, then the ears go forward, and then yeah, like that. Uh, the fourth button on here, so that that's essentially you know you've got your slow wag, fast wag, back to center, or to stop actually, and then. Uh, that's your tail tuck, tail raise, go back to center. And then the fourth button, so the fifth button is programming mode. Fourth button is random mode. So you just click it once, and it will randomly do things. So you can see it's randomly wagging the tail. It will it only uses the slow wag, kind of like battery saver option. And uh, it will do a random delay between, a uh, random number of wags. So... Uh, maybe it'll do something. It'll also ear flick, so it'll fire one ear or the other um, every once in a while. <laughs> so now we're going to be real boring and just staring at it, but um, <laughs> oh, there he goes. Okay, so he ended up with another wag. Um, the random number generator is seeded with uh, the first button press, so the first time you press a button is what it uses for the uh, seed to the random number generator. <coughs> uh, Programming uh, does actually store everything in Flash uh, in the virtual EEPROM on here with where we're leveling and everything. Um, so if I were to kill power to it, so I'll go ahead and just kill power, flip it back on, it, it will remember that um, you know we adjusted all those positions. So it remembers that. Go back to that. Go back to random mode, and it'll do its little thing. Uh, the only other feature, uh, what else is there? Um, I think that might be it. Uh, oh no, um, low voltage. So if let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, tell it to uh, let's do like just have it fast wag, right? So I don't know how I'm going to do this to get both the servos and. But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the voltage down.
And when we reach uh, 4.5 volts, which is the cutoff voltage for these little battery packs, that are usually 6 volt nickel metal hydride battery packs that I run these things off of. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, let's try this. Turn this down to simulate oh, the battery's draining. So we're going to hit 4.5 volts. And then it takes 5 seconds. And you can see it returns to center and it shuts down. Not only does it shut down, but it, it puts the micro to sleep and it powers down the servos. So you can see that I can now move the servos by hand. They're, they're no longer powered. And um, in order to uh, revive it, you got to pretty much power cycle it. So if we were to go ahead and turn this back up, 6 volts, and flip it back on. Now we're back up and running. I had moved those manually, remember? Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't move because they return back to center. And uh, we'll just hit random mode. Oh, we got an ear flick that time. So it's it's random. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the um, new uh, servo controller. Um, cost reduced. Does four channels. Um, pretty simple. Um, yeah, if you don't know. Uh, about the animatronic tails, I'm going to have one right here. Doesn't have a covering on it yet, but uh, got a battery, and I have actually put the uh, controller in there. It is programmed. I got the on-off switch. Uh, battery is fused. I I still use um, the nickel metal hydride batteries just because <coughs> lithium ion batteries. I don't know. I'm a little leery about them. You catch fire. Go look at some of the s recent cell phones uh, fires. It's kind of dangerous. I know the nickel metal hydride ones. They um, they might get hot, but they won't catch fire. But then I also do an inline fuse here. So if anything does short out, it'll just pop that fuse as close as possible to the battery pack. So yeah. Anyways, um, that's a tail. Um, it, it does actually work. I could I could flip it on here, um, other way, you ready, it'll probably move up, yeah, so, it's up and running, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to demo it on the workbench here, I'll probably have to do a separate video if you want to see it running, and, uh, go ahead and turn it off here, but, um, planning on, uh, I've got this one, uh, this is the canine one, I've got another one, uh, it's much longer, that's the feline tail, and uh, I'm going to make covering, the fur coverings for it, and then uh, those will get auctioned off to to uh, fund more projects, so, anyways, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that's it, anyways, uh, fix the ears here, but, uh, can we get an ear flick? No, another tail wag. Anyways, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.